Good evening, folks. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Happy Tuesday. Tonight, I want to go over the city council meeting. What's going on on the west side? Join me, folks. Good evening, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. Happy Tuesday. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Tonight, let's discuss the city council meeting and what some residents had to say in regards to some of the things on the agenda. Also, what's going on on the west side? Are we seeing too many affordable housing being built on the west side? Does it need to be spread out? I spoke about this last podcast. Some residents are saying that there are just way too many affordable developments being put strictly on the west side, districts one, two, and three, primarily. Tonight, uh, the city council had a meeting. Every Tuesday, they usually have meetings. Um, so if you uh, you know haven't been watching them, make sure you check them out. I'm also going to be sharing them on the page here. But uh, you can also see them on the Yonkers City Council page. Uh, many times they start at five, uh, but between five and seven. And sometimes they will have earlier meetings. Uh, but Tuesday night is usually when they have their meetings. So check it out. You know, stay informed. Anyway, folks, good evening. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Uh, I want to show the meeting. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Phil Armstrong. Um, shout out to you, Phil. And he spoke about a few things. Uh, he spoke about the uh, overdevelopment of affordable housing on the west side. Pardon me as I uh, shared this uh, post. And he also discussed the appointment of a 23, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 23-year-old um, who is set to replace his brother, Christian Jalaj. I didn't watch the actual meeting. Uh, I just, a uh, busy day today, but I'm going to go over it with you guys now. Um, so let's take a look. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, October 26, 2023. I'd like to call this committee of, we don't have the name of the individual who signed up to speak this evening. Name if you Armstrong. would like to speak on an item, solely an item that is on tonight's agenda, you can step forward to the mic. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'd like to speak on two items. Please state uh, your name for the record. My name is Philip Armstrong, 50 Landscape Avenue, Yonkers, New York. So you can see Philip Armstrong. He brought a board there uh, with the different districts. We have six districts, if you don't know, here in the city of Yonkers. Um, district six, five are uh, the east side, and then one, two, and three on the uh, west side. Uh, so just want to make that clear. Good job, Phil. And first item I'd speak on would be item number six, which is the uh, 600 uh, South Broadway project that is being asked. I don't understand what they're actually asking for on the agenda tonight, but I want to tell my part of the story anyway. This is a map of the city of Yonkers. Each one of these districts is 35,000 people. And as you can see, the three on the west side are smaller. So. At present, 40% of Westchester's low-income housing is hosted in these three districts. These three districts are half of Yonkers population, which means that 10% of Yonkers population is hosting 40% of Westchester County's low-income population. Now, we uh, had a meeting, attended the meeting before this, where the applicant for a new project, 600, sat down and said he was building workforce housing because they needed to bring jobs, they needed to survey the area. We have 40% of the low-income housing here. These people should be in those jobs. Now, if they're not, are they not willing to work? Uh, I, you know, I, I just want to say it like that. So what he's saying there is that uh, Yonkers, we're the largest city, uh, I believe, in Westchester County, and we have 10% uh, of Westchester's pop total population, he's saying there, and we are... Uh, are hosting or housing 40% of Westchester's affordable housing, right? So we're hosting a, a huge number. One city, city of Yonkers, is 40% 
of the affordable housing. And he's believing that it should be spread out. Now, he's not saying that they should be built on the east side. And you'll see a lot of resistance there. Uh, but he's saying it should be spread out throughout the county. It shouldn't be 40 percent in Yonkers. Um, and, you know, not necessarily just on the southwest side, but in Yonkers, period, we shouldn't be hosting us 40 percent. And so that's what he's saying there. So if we already have 40 percent of the housing, how is bringing in more low income housing into our area going to improve the workforce in our in those areas? We need uh, we need to have an area that's economically viable and by warehousing on the west side of Yonkers, low-income housing, which has been done by the county and the city, we are at this point going to suffer economically for years to go. Uh, my area down here in District 2 is predominantly uh, middle class, many many homeowners. Uh, they present us as a lower uh, class, or, or I shouldn't say class, but lower economic area. It's, it's, it's a fairly good area. It's been a good area. I've lived there for 35 years, I know the area. So I, I you know, I'm just flabbergasted at some of the, some of the things we say, you know, we're not against low income housing. We're not against West Hab. West Hab is a great developer. They run great projects. They develop and they manage projects well. We met with uh, Shanae and, uh, and Corazon here with Mr. Nightingale a few, uh, uh, a few weeks back and we explained our concerns uh, about this and it's, we're just aghast at what has happened to the west side of Yonkers. We're not asking for you to put housing on the east side. We're not saying stick it over here because we have it over here. Because we already have 40% of the low income housing in Westchester County within the city of Yonkers. So um, if we start fighting with the east side, it's, it's a no win situation. We know that. So we're not going to say stick it on the east side. We're going to say, at this point, we need to have all the parts of West to step up and do their part for helping uh, low income and affordable housing. It's just, it's just outrageous that we're doing that. Now, many times they get their variances when they go for these uh, for these things. It's 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 almost like if it so I, I, I don't want to let me stop there. He's going to get into something that is very interesting, uh, something I've spoken about. Many of you people uh, um, who watch have also uh, had issues with uh, in terms of the changing of zoning laws and variance and stuff like that. But w before that, he was talking about workforce housing and workforce housing is basically housing that's built for the people who are going to be working, um, you know, in the city on the developments and other things. Right. You know, you got to bring a workforce in to do this stuff. So you need to provide housing for them. So he's saying, why are they building workforce housing, right? More affordable housing. And they're calling it workforce housing when we have so much affordable housing or low income housing where people need jobs. There are people here in the city that need jobs, right? So why aren't they getting the jobs? Why are they building workforce housing to bring in people, to import folks into Yonkers to work? when the job should be going to the people of Yonkers as they were promised, right? So that's what he's saying. It just doesn't make sense. Um, and now he's gonna talk about the variances and why is it that the, uh, you know, these developers seem to get whatever it is that they want, whatever change that they need, um, they get it. You know, if they wanna go higher, they change the, the zoning laws and they're allowed to go higher. If they wanna build developments with the, le you know, with less than the required amount of parking spaces, they're getting that. Many times they're putting half the amount of parking spaces as they have units and they're getting away with that. That creates a parking problem, right? If you got more people now needing to park on the street because the development they just built is only, you know, uh, has 50 parkings, but it's a hundred units right? There's other 50 units of people that, you know, are going to need to park somewhere, right? And that's going to create a parking nightmare, which we already have here in the city. You're a favorable developer, and I'm going on to item one now. Uh, you're a favorable developer in the city of Yonkers. Uh, you get your parking variances, you get your height variances. Nothing seems to really uh, take into consideration the needs of the people. Uh, we tonight have, uh, from what I see, a proposal to appoint a 23 year old. And so he's going to mention that also. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this uh, meeting is because on the agenda, uh, they are, you know, going to uh, or looking to appoint a 23 year old man whose brother 
already sits on the uh, zoning board. So they're looking to have him replace his brother, a 25 year old uh, individual who replaced a longtime zoning board member. And so what he's saying here is that these developers are getting whatever changes that they want, whatever variances they want, right? And it's not beneficial to the people in the community. And that's exactly what the issue was with the individual who was removed from the zoning board. He felt the same way. He wasn't willing to approve all of these zoning changes that they brought before them or, you know, and he thought it wasn't going to be good for the community either. So what did they do after he'd been on the board for 30 years? They removed him and replaced him with a 25-year-old man by the name of Anthony G. Lodge, right? They didn't even notify him. They just appointed this guy, and he's watching the meeting, and he's like, Where, where's their room on the board? And then he realized he was being replaced. He would receive a letter three months later stating that his services were no longer needed. But he had been there 30 years, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and that's probably why they got rid of him because they don't want you to be knowledgeable. They don't want you to know what's going on. They don't want you to speak up and do the right thing, right? So they went and appointed this young guy whose father is a developer, a real estate investor here in the city of Yonkers. And now they're looking to replace him after about a year with this younger brother. So it's like nepotism are these positions on the board inherited. And what experience and knowledge do these young men have? And how are they going to, you know, truly make the best decisions for the people of Yonkers if they, you know, have no other interest in other than seeing their father maybe do well or whatever it is that, you know, they may ask him to approve, right? All this nepotism has to stop. I agree. It even happens in the zoning board. Young man, out of college, he's college educated. I have a little college myself, Sam. I understand that it's important. He's got two, maybe three years work experience. Uh, the council cited in their in their uh, the thing that he's got, he's worked at some high priced jobs, which uh, I mean, the only way you get into those jobs is either by applying or you have a, a very wealthy uh, parent that gets you into those jobs. So there's, uh, there's, there's a question of that. Now, we would question, this young man is going to be making decisions on our lives. What's going to happen in our neighborhoods? How can the city of Yonkers appoint by the mayor and you council people approve a young man that's, I mean, if he was driving, he'd still be on a signed risk because he can't get off that. He's not 25 years of age yet. He's got no life experience. He's got no knowledge about the city. Uh, where does anybody on the committee or the council, excuse me, come up with the idea that this would be a good idea that to just green light this and let go. And never mind the fact that he's just replacing his brother, a 28 year old, again, who got a job when he wasn't prepared for it. And it's just too important a job within the city of Yonkers to give to anybody but a seasoned old person that's been in the city and knows the city. It's like, it's like uh, Mr. Marathi said, these zoning codes were passed somewhere in the past for reasons. I mean, if you look at the city, we had city plans, we've had many plans to, to, to go before the city. Now, to just take them and throw them out the window because a developer comes along and says, I can spend more money there, or I think I can make it uh, a better when it's only hurting the city of Yonkers in the long run. If the west side doesn't do well with all the development going on, if the economics are not there for it to work, then how can the city of Yonkers work? So even though we're very dense, we're very congested, the, the, the council and the boards that are appointed by the mayor are allowing all this development. If it develops, uh, we did a project in Yonkers here back in the 70s on Riverdale Avenue, a high priced development right across the street from 80 and 100 Riverdale. What is that project today? It's 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 the one of the I mean, if you go by there, there's a there's a police car parked outside on the medium there every night to tr just try and keep down the problems that are there. If we allow this to continue and we have uh, we have a large group of low income people in one area, we're looking to make basically what's called a slum. And 
even though we're building all these high price houses, they're, they're being built for an income of $150,000. The average income in Yonkers is 75, if I remember correctly. So basically, we're building these buildings for people that don't live in Yonkers. They're going to come here and replace the the, the uh, existing uh, citizens of Yonkers. So thank you for your. So, you know, one of the things he again, he stresses the fact that, you know, the developers seem to be getting whatever changes that they are asking for. Whatever the developers want is what they get. Um, there were these zoning laws that were created for a reason. And one of them uh, that was changed was the height of the buildings, right? There was this, you know, thing where the people of Yonkers, you know, wanted to make sure that the buildings weren't going over a certain height. You know, people wanted to enjoy the views of the Hudson. And that was change you know recently with all the developments going up they've been letting um developers go higher and higher right you're gonna we're gonna see uh the the one on hudson street hudson terrace that one was one of the first ones where they changed the zoning to allow that to go higher initially they wanted to do 27 stories um but they then settled on 25 which was still higher than what was allowed normally now they're going to be putting another uh development up that's going to be 44 stories high right and so um you're going to have two developments on uh two towers on woodworth that are going to be 32 stories high blocking the view of many of the homes that are there along Woodworth Avenue. And a lot of the members of that community were very upset about that and have been, you know, trying to fight that for a long time now to no success because I believe they're actually moving forward. And the problem with a lot of these developments also is that they're causing businesses to close. So people are actually losing jobs, not getting jobs. Small businesses are having to shut down because they want the property, they want the land that the business sits on. Homes have been, you know, uh, sold under pressure because they wanted the property where those homes sat at. And another business is closing as a result of the 32-story towers. There's daycare centers that are being closed as a result of these developments. And now children are having to be relocated right put into other daycares and parents are having to now go further than they you know had to before because the community daycare where they have put their child in for many years is now having to close down because of the developments that are being built so this is putting a lot of the people in from yonkers right um, through changes we're going through a lot of changes we're dealing with a lot of things that we were not told about not made aware of we were promised the jobs we don't see the jobs right we were promised the prosperity the economic prosperity the small businesses would benefit but many of them are closing they're not benefiting they're even bringing trucks from jersey with food for the construction workers and lionsgate has its own cafeteria where whoever is working at Lionsgate can go and get food. So how much, you know, business is it really bringing to the small businesses? And, you know, so we haven't seen a lot of what's been promised. The next uh, person to speak is Eileen O'Connor. She's uh, from Indivisible. Thank you. Uh, 16, I believe. Very strong. Hi, I'm Eileen O'Connor. I live at 71 Valentine Lane in Yonkers. And I wanted to talk about the first item on the agenda, which is the appointment of a um, Christian Gillet, uh to the Zoning right. Board of Appeals. Um, I echo what uh, Philip said in terms of his uh, age and experience. I'm not an ageist, but um, there's got to be some really well-qualified folks in Yonkers who would be very willing to, um, you know, donate their time to make this the city better. Somebody whose father hasn't donated to mm. the mayor's campaign and whose brother wasn't in this before him. It just reeks of nepotism, mm. and it, you know, it's just a really bad look. And um, there's a. This is, you know, Yonkers is on the upswing. There's a lot of people who are really well qualified, I'm sure, who could do very well at this uh, position. So I urge you to vote no on on this appointment. As far as the, I live on uh, on Ludlow Park, and as far as this uh, um, a building on, on South Broadway, you know, there's an awful, terrible need for housing in Yonkers. And I am, uh, as a person living in Ludlow Park, very supportive of the idea of mixed income housing. There's so many people 
who live here whose kids can't afford to stay here, right? So something like this is the model that is needed to, um, to, to make, make people be able to stay in the town that they grew up in if they want to. The issue is parking. Uh, it'll be a nightmare. Uh, there's not adequate public transportation to get people to and from jobs. Um, and uh, so that, that for me is the piece that needs to get worked out. And, you know, they talk about um, housing not being able to be built in other parts of the city. For mixed income housing, if you talk to people who are, you know, getting older and living in their homes on the east side and their kids can't afford to stay here, I bet they would, they would be willing to have something like this be, be in their district, um, you know, if they understood what it was. It's a way to keep, keep uh, people in Yonkers if they want to stay here. So, so regardless of, of their income, but, but mixing it up, it's been shown to be a model that, that works if it's small enough and there's good, um, you know, support systems in place in terms of maintenance and the parking is uh, adequate for the situation. South Broadway is already a mess in terms of uh, uh, traffic. So to, to give uh, variances for parking is a mistake, I think. Um, so that, that needs to get worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the gallery that would like to speak on the item that is on tonight's so, agenda? Again, uh, the parking, and that's, uh, you know, it's very true. I mean, you know, if you've ever lived um, uh, on the southwest side, especially, and had to deal with parking on the street, you know, that is a huge, uh, you know, a challenge many times, you know, depending on what time you go home, you come home. So you have to deal with alternate side parking and even at times meters in front of certain buildings. So, you know, if you're going to uh, park your car before eight, nine o'clock, you have to pay meters, even though you're home. So it's very challenging for folks on the west side to find parking if they park on the street. And, you know, it's not going to help that a lot of these developments are allowed are being allowed to only build half of the amount of required parking spaces, right? They're being allowed to change the rules so that they don't have to provide, you know, enough parking spaces. And they're doing a lot of this with the senior developments as well. Their idea is that, you know, many seniors are not going to be driving, uh, but residents say that's not true. Seniors like to travel. They like to go and do things, you know, and there's still a lot of seniors that drive and I see them on the road all the time, slowing me down. I'm just kidding. Right. So, you know, it, that's kind of, you know, just uh, assuming, right, make an assumption based on their age that they're not going to drive, you know, they're not going to need as many parking spaces. But they're also doing this with just, you know, general affordable housing, like the one that's being built on Main Street and Warburton um, by McQuesten, the St. Clair. That one's going to have, I believe, 76 units, and they're only putting about 24 parking spaces uh, with that. So, you know, you're going to have to find the parking on the street or you're going to have to pay for the, uh, you know, the public garages that they have there nearby. But that also means that they have to walk if they live there, right, to go park in that garage or they're going to have to struggle to find a parking on the street uh, in that area. And you have to pay meters over there, too. So you have to contend with that. So, it, you know, it's going to cause a huge problem. And as they said, the public transportation is not like that of the city. Right. So people are still going to need vehicles. And it's obvious that people have cars, even though they're living at the waterfront. I mean, you can see how crowded the streets have gotten. City Council President looks right. Uh, my family has been here over 50 years um, near Nepahan Community Center. Warburton Avenue. Um, I've spoken with several of the council people about various issues. My first one I want to speak about is parking on Riverdale Avenue. On Riverdale, I'm sorry, between sir. Mr. Marriott, we're yes. only speaking with regard to items that are on tonight's agenda. I thought we could speak about anything. No, sir, it's only items on, that are on the agenda. Um, I'm going to use the number 23. Um, I have over 23 years of experience as a building official in various municipalities. I have over 15 years of experience as a union delegate for operating engineers and business, uh, 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 building, building officials. I would like to, for, for council to clearly understand that a zoning official 
is a very, very important job. A planning official is a very, very important job. Absolutely. They must be very well qualified to make very important decisions about the city, where it's going, and what the plan is, and what the regulations will do to affect the existing municipality. Please understand, my brother, who is an engineer, cannot make me electrician and engineer. My uncle, who was union president, cannot make me president, <laughs> although I have over 23 years of experience, well qualified to do the job. If you're looking for candidates, reach out. I'm available. <laughs> I think each council person should be able to elect a person in their mm. area, in their zone, to the board. I don't think the mayor or any particular person in the city should be able to have that much power mm. to just elect who they want to elect, to allow them to then go ahead and rubber stamp projects that they want done. Mm. And that's what's really going on. And we need to really look at this as lovers of this city and make a more, more intelligent decision and research and find the right candidates for these positions. Thank you. Thank you. Great point. I like what he said. I like the fact that uh, what he said, each council member or, you know, should be tasked with finding someone in their district to be on the board, someone qualified, obviously, we don't just wanna pick anybody from anywhere, but that makes sense. If they live in the district, if they're you know qualified and knowledgeable, then they're vested, they're gonna make a best a decision for people in that community, right? They're not gonna say, you know what? Let them build taller so they can block everybody's views. They're gonna take that into consideration. They're not gonna allow them to just put half the number of parking spaces because they understand the parking situation in their communities, right? So it's important that we have people that are from the communities making these decisions. But that's not what's happening. Many people on the board are people who are not really from the communities that they are impacting. I hear even one of them, Hector Lopez, the brother of Lorraine Lopez, the aunt of the guy they were trying to award a contract to the other day, the bulletproof window guy. Yeah, his uncle, Hector Lopez, sits on the zoning board. And I hear he lives in Poughkeepsie. So, or peak skill, one of the two Ps. So what is he doing on the zoning board here in the city of Yonkers? What knowledge and experience does he have? He's in law enforcement. And so he made a great point also. You can't just have that much power where you can appoint anyone. And then you're going to have rubber stampers. They're just going to approve everything for the developers. But remember, the council ultimately approved these changes. So what are the council members doing about it? Are they listening to the people in their districts? Are they hearing what their constituents are saying? No. Plan B was kind of disheartened our community. Oh, I appreciate it. I want to say hi to my future colleagues. Um, I want to start with saying uh, we often tell our residents to plan ahead, uh, however, have, and have a plan B. However, hearing developers up here saying that they don't have a plan B was kind of disheartening uh, because they're just so confident that things will just move along. And so they don't even have to think of a plan B. Um, I personally think that a lot of the development should go through the planning department before zoning. I mean, the planning board before zoning. Um, but. What do I know? Uh, second thing is um, there's no accountability towards property owners. So from the high rises to the hood, uh, people are moving into these developments uh, and there's no one to help them. So uh, there's people in downtown Yonkers and these high rises who are getting floods, who are getting their cars damaged um, and also 
there's just no accountability towards any type of property owners throughout Yonkers. Um, and this can easily be researched and, and um, tried. And lastly, um, I'm a firm believer uh, in encouraging all residents to participate in their local government and be more civically engaged. However, I believe this proposed appointment is blatant nepotism. Mm. The young man, although probably a really good kid only has the last name as a qualification mm. while that may be a bit harsh it is proven fact that replace he's only replacing his own brother taking another step back the commonality is the name they share from their father who donated thousands of dollars to many political campaigns in this room and the one appointing him mayor mike spano and we have so we are, and here we are. A vote comes before the council. A council needs four votes where two members have themselves received political donations from wow. his father. So now I'm asking the board, um, how much is this seat worth? And how can ordinary citizens be a voice at this table? So my last question is, I ask the council to name their price or to vote no on this appointment. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And that is Hector Santiago. He's uh, running against Tasha Diaz, District 3. You can vote for him if you're in District 3 this November 7th, although early voting begins October 28th. And you can go to one of the libraries, Will Library, Riverfront Library. I posted up the times there, um, October 28th. I said the same thing. Nice young man, but it's unethical. It was already a done deal. Yeah, so, you know, obviously it's already a done deal. They talk about this. They plan this, right? But it's good to see people coming out and people beginning to voice their, um, you know, concerns, um, their displeasures with the way that the council members are doing their jobs, Right. He said, Hector Santiago, this is nepotism. The only reason why he's being appointed is because of his last name, who his father is, a man that has donated to many of the elected officials, including two of them that are sitting on the council there at that meeting, you know, and they're still voting to appoint this guy. So he says, how much does the seat cost? How much is it worth? Right. And they know it. You can see the city council uh, president's face. They know what they're doing. They know that we know what they're doing. They know that we're right. But this is what they have to do. They have political careers to maintain. And if they veer off the plan, if they go astray, right? If they go rogue, if they rebel, then that means political, you know, suicide. And they don't want to do that. Many of them have promises that have been made to them, rewards that are awaiting them if they do the bidding of their handlers. And so I appreciate Hector for coming on and saying that. I uh, was speaking, not coming on, but speaking at the meeting. And I'm hoping to have Hector Santiago join me on the podcast. I know people have been telling him, you should go see that guy who's speaking the truth, basement politics. Hector, you got my vote. There you go. Vote Spano out. It's that simple. It will be a trickle effect. You know, people must come out. We have to come out to vote. Voter turnout has been low. And so if you don't like the way things have been going and you haven't been voting, you have to take some responsibility there and you can repent by coming out to vote this year. October 28th, early voting. November 7th is election day. Let's come out. Let's come out in full force. Numbers, right? Numbers. We need to make this the highest voter turnout in decades. I knew everything that was going on in the world until I turned 24. Then I turned 25. Then I turned 30. 35. I'm going to stop at 40 because um, there might be some young men that I coach in basketball that would do some basic math and figure out that I'm not 40 years old. Um, a little bit older. My point is simply this. I don't know how this process works. I'm still getting somewhat familiar with it. Uh, the truth of the matter is... Um, I reside in Fargo, North Dakota, and I only became involved with the planning board and the zoning board and city council because I saw some things that were going on. We all know, those who were at this last meeting, um, what took place with my mother. My mother resides at 233 Woodworth yeah. Avenue on March 4th, 10 o'clock in the evening. 
15 officers from the Yonkers Police Department showed up in the middle of the night, 10 o'clock in the evening, to remove automobiles. Now, I could elaborate on all the inconsistencies and the irregularities concerning it. Some of you have already heard it. But the reality is, is they're intertwined. Some might think that I'm not talking about issues today or what's on the agenda today, but it, it actually is on the agenda or it is related for the simple fact that um, across the street from 229 Woodworth Avenue is 230 Woodworth Avenue. 230 Woodworth Avenue. 230 Woodworth Avenue is the driveway that's supposed to lead up to this 30, 40 million dollar monstrosity that has been already rammed through the planning board and our zoning board. And I believe uh, the intent is to make sure that that building goes up at what costs, at what cost to the community. And um, in relationship to that is, uh, I guess this is the only board that hasn't heard this. Um, residing in the upper Midwest, there's a lot of smaller communities. And in those smaller communities, Home Depots open up. When Home Depots open up, five to 10 mom and pop hardware stores have to shut down. And in these smaller communities, Applebee's will open up. TGI Fridays. Um, Olive Garden. When those businesses open up, five to 10 mom and pop diners, restaurants have to shut down. They can't compete. It's just basic logic. They can't compete at, they can't provide the same goods and services that the big box stores can. So I'm going to say, I'm going to reference businesses that might hit home here. Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, Mr. Carpenter, Domino's. Can we wrap it up in a moment? Just one more minute, 30 seconds. Okay. You are selling the soul of the city of Yonkers. Mm. You have local councilmen, people who represent your government. When you allow conglomerates, big business and big money to come into your community, local government is no longer accountable to its citizens. Mm. They become accountable to big money. Mm. You are selling the soul of the city of Yonkers. Five to 10 to 15 years from now, you will come to find that Yonkers is not controlled by its citizens anymore. It'll be controlled by big money. I urge you to seriously think about all the projects that are coming through. And there are some people who have a personal responsibility to make sure that the residents of the city of Yonkers are remembered when these decisions are being made. Thank you. Thank you. So by proposing variant. I mean, that was great. The guy made great points there, right? And he's referring to the two towers that they're gonna build on Woodworth that I just mentioned. Two 32 story towers causing residents to have to be displaced, businesses, daycare center has to move, families, parents, kids being displaced, their lives disrupted and disturbed. At the very least, their views are being blocked. But that's a small, narrow street. You've ever been a Woodworth? It's very narrow. For them to have these two tall, uh, 32 story towers makes no sense. And a lot of residents there are upset, but they're pushing through. And he says they're selling the soul of Yonkers. Once you allow this big money, the deep pocket developers, as they say, the big money guys come in, Yonkers is now in the control of those people, not the residents. And so we have been seeing that. They control our government. Doesn't matter what people go up there and say. They ring the bell on you. They're not listening. They're rolling their eyes. And at the end of the meeting, they're going to move forward with their decision anyway. But I love the fact that more and more people are coming out. And as more and more developments go up, people are starting to see the writing on the wall. They're realizing what's happening. Gentrification of classes. 
That's what's happening here in the city of Yonkers. And we must come out this November and vote. I was just at the meeting in Crestwood, the mayor working really hard on the 100 people done with flooding and lies from the mayor. It was a two and a half hour meeting. A lot of people are very upset about flooding that uh, has occurred due to the heavy rains. And yes, there were heavy rains, but this has been happening in Yonkers for so long now. Why has there not been something done about it? Why has that not been mitigated? Why are people still having their homes flooded? businesses flooded and a lot of the developments on the waterfront were flooded as well and people have been complaining about that freddie aren't you running for mayor uh you can write my name in alfredo vasquez that's my full name as a write-in absolutely i didn't get on the ballot but folks you can write whoever you want in and that's the beautiful thing that's true freedom of choice you know so let's see god bless what god wants will happen he needs to run for office yes i you know, I, I don't think he can run for office here in Yonkers. He is from Wells Fargo. Um, I'm sorry, Wells Fargo, um, Fargo, North Dakota, I think is what it's called. They made a movie about that, right? And uh, so he came here because his mom lives on 229 Woolworth Avenue. And uh, they said something about they came knocking on do um, doors late at night, the police officers, because they wanted to clear the cars. Uh, they do that when they're going to be doing some kind of construction or getting ready and they need to have the area, the street, you know, clear of cars so they can work. So that's probably what they were doing. His mother being an elderly woman, I'm sure that made him upset about all the changes that are going on in her community, right on her street. And so he came all the way from North Dakota to speak at the meeting. He says he's been paying attention now. He's been watching what's going on here in the city of Yonkers. And it's obvious that they are selling the soul of Yonkers. That's right. They're selling the souls of Yonkers. I have a video. He was blaming the president, the legislator, and even the governor. Who's that? Uh, the mayor on the flooding? This woman here that's about to speak, and I'll, I'll do one last person. She is uh, a woman that's spearheading the, uh, you know, the uh, opposition against the two thirty-two story towers on Woodworth that they're building just about directly across the street from the home that she purchased maybe about two and a half years ago when she moved to Yonkers. And so, just so you guys know, it's not just the Yonkers residents, the longtime Yonkers residents who've been here all their lives or for twenty plus years. It's also the new people that have moved in within the past two years that are also complaining. Many who did not anticipate so much development happening. And so that's pissing them off. People have bought homes here. Now they're having developments built right near their home. They're having to deal with construction. And that's pissing them off as well. And this woman here that you see is one of them who came from Puerto Rico, actually. I believe she's an attorney and she is heading up the opposition there on Woodworth changes that once they are here in the city council there's nothing to be discussed around the in the zoning and they are changing the character of our neighborhood we don't want another case here of segregation but with the with what it has been decided by this city council of the 10 percent of affordable housing and all the new development happening in the same area of the city what we're going to lead is to have another case where we have all black and brown people in one area of the city, which we already have, right? So I think that we need to consider who we are appointed to these boards, people that are invested in the community, people that represent each and every neighborhood of the city of Yonkers, and people who really understand and have the experience and the knowledge that we need in order to develop a smart city, a smart development, and a development that is responsible, that is responsible with the businesses that we have. Right now in District 1, we only have one supermarket, maybe too. We don't have almost laundromat. We don't have the needs that, that the community needs. And what I see is that they are pushing me out. They are pushing everybody out. They are taking right. away home ownership because nothing that is coming back to the city is home ownership. We don't have condos. We don't have co-ops. Everything is rental. And they are very um, detrimental um, developments that are fading apart. Avalon had a big issue. Apex have been having big issues with their construction and how bad it is and, and everything, all the damages that it has been. So I don't think it's, it's doing any favor to the city just to develop by develop and not being smart, sitting down with the community and understanding. And these people from the zoning board, I have to say, they are at times disrespectful 
with us, with the citizens, when we go and talk. Mm. They don't represent us. There's nobody from my district that sits in the city, in the zoning, mm. or in the planning board. The only representative that I have in the government in Yonkers is Shanae and Lakeisha that lives in my district, but nobody else. And we need more representation, especially with all these changes that are happening in my district. Thank you. Absolutely, I agree with her. Uh, and she's not really happy with that representation. Uh, you know, I know that, you know, she knows that they don't do much and she's had that experience. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, Shanae Williams is looking to become the county legislator. She represents that area, District 1. Lakeisha Collins Bellamy grew up in that area. She's the city council president and she represents all the districts, right? And so why are they not saying anything? Why are they not in support of the people of the Northwest side when that's the people they represent? That's the community that they live in. Northwest and Southwest, the West side uh, as a whole and the waterfront specifically. I've said this many times, Shanae Williams don't care. She's paid by the developers. She is a Zahi Jarris machine candidate. The funding comes from the developers that are doing these developments. So Shanae Williams is gonna go along with it. She's not representing you guys. She doesn't care to represent you. She does not. I've had constituents in her district contact me to get help and I've helped them while Shanae has done nothing, absolutely nothing. So why does she deserve to continue to be an elected official? And I'm not trying to target you, Shanae, I'm not hating on you, it's not personal, but you know, you have not done anything. You have let the people in that district down, many black people down, people that look like you, Shanae. Not only are you not representing your district, you're not representing your people. But all you care about is getting ahead, going to the legislator, the board of legislators, getting your boo thing some money, right? Because she's getting her boyfriend who just came into the city to do some program, all this grant money, get some a building, get some a whole ambulance. And what's he really doing? He's waiting for Lionsgate to set up so he can have his little film school so he can make some money in the movie industry. That's what it's all about. It's not about helping kids. It's not about putting... Uh, cameras in their hands instead of guns because that's not happening. They're still shooting the guns. They're not shooting the cameras. Where's the ambulance at? Did we pay us taxpayers? Did they get grant money for this ambulance so they can do projects outside of the city of Yonkers like other individuals who have received city money, taxpayer, Yonkers taxpayer money only to do things outside of the city? That's wasteful spending, but that's what they're all about making sure that the people that do their bidding are happy. Shanae's happy, her boyfriend's happy. She's gonna sell out the District 1 and the people on the West Side, no problem. That's what it's about. And Shanae has been carried through politics here in the city of Yonkers since she was out of college. She was the mayor's uh, you know, assistant or something like that. And when he was up in the assembly, she came down here. They appointed her after Chris Johnson moved up to the Board of Legislators. She's been in there ever since. Now she's going up to the Board of Legislators. They don't care about the people. It's a career for them. And they are trying to maintain their career. Nothing more, nothing less. Is there anyone governing the city of Yonkers? Is there any, is there any agency, any group that actually can... Uh do some sort of checks and balances. Is there anyone governing the city of Yonkers? Is there anyone there to do checks and balances? That is what the city council is for. The mayor can appoint who he want. The city council doesn't have to approve it. The city council had an opportunity to over override the mayor's veto on the affordable housing ordinance. They could have showed that they have some power, but they didn't. Tasha Diaz flip-flop, changing her vote. So who is checking the administration? Where is the check and balance? Where are the people that are supposed to protect the residents and hear what the residents want and need and step up and say, this is what the residents want and need and I'm not gonna accept anything less. Where are those representatives at? None of them have represented their districts in the way they should. And at this point it's become so obvious. Look at how this guy's talking. Who's representing the people? Who's running the government? Where are the checks and balances? What's going on here? It's unbelievable. That would be an excellent idea. Um, I don't know what it would take to happen, 
but I got a strange feeling we're asking the, what is it, the wolf to watch the hen house? Yeah. yeah. Just a thought. It would be nice to have some sort of checks and balances. Therefore, there wouldn't be the suspicion that, mm. that citizens would have about government and how you are conducting business here. Just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. So what is, t- what is Lakeisha thinking there? You see her face? Is there- what is going through her mind at that moment right there? What is she thinking as this guy is saying this? Because she knows it's true, right? We all know it's true. She knows it's true. And at this point, it's becoming so obvious that there's nothing else to say about it. Uh, nothing else to say about our city council, except that they do not represent the people. They don't work for us. They're doing everything for the developers. Everything for the big money people, the deep pocket guys. That's who they represent. And it's become so obvious now. that We, it, it, we can't think of anything else, but they're selling us out. Right? That's it. And so what's going through her mind? She's like, damn, we can't even hide it anymore. What's going to happen next as it becomes more and more obvious, as we expose it more and more? What's going to happen next? Let's keep going. We don't stop here. We have to keep pushing, folks. And I'm glad to see so many people came out. And I'm glad to hear, uh, you know, the people say what they're saying. It's finally being tough with the city council members. They're not going up there just saying, thank you guys, we appreciate it. I know you do such a hard job, but do you think that you can stop the developers? No more of that. We have to go up there and say, you are corrupt. You are not representing us and it's obvious. And it's time that we vote you out. You want people to represent you? Well, you're gonna have some candidates soon. I know I will be one of them if you don't write my name for mayor, but seriously, my wife and I decided this. I'm gearing up for a serious run, and I will be talking more about it and make an official announcement as the time gets closer. But we need someone in our council that's willing to step up and defend and protect the people of the city of Yonkers and say, screw you, developers. I don't need you because I have the people behind me, and that's all I need, right? And that's the kind of people we need representing us. Forget the money. Anyone else in the gallery who has not spoken already that would like to speak on an item that is on tonight's agenda? Majority Leader Diaz. Present. Majority Whip Rubel. Minute to the stated meeting held on October 10th, 2023. Approved, approved on motion of Majority Leader Diaz. The minutes are duly accepted. Madam President, the first item in the agenda is marked on the old business. It's a resolution, the appointment of Christian July to the Zoning Board of Appeal. We will ask Mr. July if he is in the gallery to please step to the podium. Is Mr. Mr. July, July the before we get started, if you would like to tell us a bit about yourself, and then I will open the floor to the council to ask you further questions. Sure thing. Good evening, council members, President Collins. My name is Christian July. I'm a lifelong resident of Yonkers. Yonkers raised me, and I love this place. I'm a son of people who fled war in Eastern Europe. They chose an excellent place to raise me, and I have a lot that I owe to this place. I'm here before you tonight because I have a desire to give back. I have been involved in a variety of charitable fundraising efforts throughout my life thus far. I want to continue in that same spirit to give back. I want to continue to volunteer my time. Uh, It's what I love to do. And I welcome your questions and I appreciate your time. Thank you. So what do you think? He's a lifelong residence. He's been doing a lot of charity stuff and he's looking forward to giving back by being on the zoning board. How do you give back by being on the zoning board? Are you going to stop all these developments? Because that's how you're going to give back. You're going to slow them down. You're not going to allow them to build the 32 story towers on Woodworth. Are you not going to allow them to go any higher? Are you going to make sure that they add the required number of parking? Are you going to make sure that they have the proper setbacks? Like, how are you going to give back, Christian? I would like to know. Or are you there to give to your dad who fought a war in Eastern, or maybe? Open the floor up to questions from the council. We'll start with a uh, majority with Rubo. Thank you, Council President. Uh, uh, Christian, thank you for joining us today and um, your willingness to serve. 
Uh, can you go into a little bit more detail, you know, why you want to serve on the zoning board? Yeah, sure. Um, so I have a long range of experience in uh, local government. I've held positions here in Yonkers at the city level. I've uh, worked in positions at the county level and even at the federal level. I have some. You see, this is this is the thing that I talk about a lot, right? You hear what this guy said. I have a long range of experience in, you know, local government, city government. He's had positions already within our city government and as well as county government. Many kids that grow up on the west side, the side that they're destroying, would love to have an opportunity where they can work early in life in city hall or in city government or somewhere in Westchester County to gain experience, to meet people, to build their network so they can then one day get out of the poverty that they live in. But that often doesn't happen for folks like us. It took me to leave Yonkers to go to an entirely different state in the Midwest before I started to meet people, to build my network, before I was given opportunities where I can learn things that would benefit me as an adult, things that would help with my career and help me succeed. But that's not the case for the majority of the people on the West Side. That's not the case for the majority of the students in the Yonkers Public Schools. But that is the case for this young man, as well as his brother. They get put into different positions within the city. Now they're here at the zoning board. He's here to replace his brother. So these are why these individuals go on to succeed, because they are giving all these opportunities. Their dad is who he is. He knows the people in, in City Hall. He knows the mayor. He donates. And so for that, they are given opportunities that many kids in the city of Yonkers are not given. That's why many kids in the city of Yonkers do not succeed. Many parents do not reach the same level as this man and his family. And I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm not hating on them for having these opportunities, but I just wanna show you the differences between being impoverished and having a daddy who makes a lot of money and donates to politicians experience uh, working for Congressman Elliot Engel of the 16th District of New York. Uh, and that's why they got rid of Bring the mic closer to you so that oh, we can pick up the Oh, apologies. Audio. Can you hear me now? Yes. The Verizon commercial? Even closer. Even closer. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, should I repeat everything I said? Oh, he sounds okay. like an asshole. Um, and so it's through these experiences in local and even federal government that I learned how to navigate the bureaucracy that often typifies government bodies. And I uh, have never experienced uh, something like being on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, however, I have over six years of experience in uh, uh, real estate in the private sector that I think complements my public sector experience well. Uh, I've worked uh, as I work for companies as small as uh, tiny mom and pop shops that are immigrant run uh, to larger corporations. Uh, and throughout all those experiences, uh, I made it a point to prioritize representation of minority communities and traditionally underrepresented uh, peoples uh, wherever it was that I was working. Uh, I took a detour from there for a little bit so and I entered finance. Uh, I entered a federal credit union where I rose to become a vice president and this was during the COVID what? pandemic. There I made it a point to protect vulnerable communities who were being particularly affected by the pandemic from entering cycles of debt and being uh, per persecuted by uh, predatory collections agencies. Uh, so from there, then that brings me to where I'm working now, which is at Citibank, uh, where I also do commercial real estate lending. And there I've mm. been on projects that uh, lend to affordable housing developers who are interested mm. in providing high quality, uh, reasonably priced housing across the United States. And uh, I can speak more of any of these experiences should anyone have any questions. But there was a common theme throughout all of my private sector experience, and that is to serve the communities in which I'm doing uh, my a private sector experience. I think having a public sector background from 
the very moment I was able to work legally uh, and to enter in uh, the position where I am now, which is at the intersection of financial uh, financial uh, work and also real estate work, uh, I think I bring a unique perspective to the ZBA. Um, I, I think this would be useful. And if I could address uh, some questions regarding uh, my age, I'm also happy to do that as well. Uh, but that's uh, a thorough response to uh, what you said. Thank you. Um, so he's saying basically that his experience in both the private sector and public sector, uh, specifically in finance and real estate, have, uh, uh, you know, give him a, a unique perspective. You know, currently he's working for Citibank and commercial lending. So he's involved with, you know, fan, for helping finance big development projects. He tried to talk about helping finance affordable housing projects, right? He doesn't want to tell you about the luxury stuff he's really dealing with and probably, uh, you know, involved in some of the things that are happening here in Yonkers, you know, helping get financing for some of these projects, maybe projects for his own father, right? But how does that all help the people of Yonkers? How does that make you a good candidate or the best candidate to sit on the zoning board? What has he said that helps besides being in real estate? Right? He's able to work legally or he's been, since he's been working. When it comes to economic development, uh, you know, what, what are your views on economic development and, and green space and, and um, you know, how we've developed in the city uh, a variety of projects? Well, well, I think it's important to note that this, what's happening here in Yonkers is not unique to us. I think throughout the United States, there has become a reckoning that uh, Green space in particular, let's take that as an example, uh, is something that has not been afforded traditionally to lower income uh, communities of diverse backgrounds. And so I think insofar as Yonkers is investing in communities to ensure that people who have traditionally not had access to these spaces can now have it, uh, this is excellent. Of course, if it's done procedurally correctly under legal premises, Yes, and with the uh, concerns of citizens' health and safety in mind, I'm all for it. However, I will give the caveat that the nature of the jurisdiction afforded to uh, the zoning board is appellate. It's not original. So what, we're do what I would be doing if I were appointed would be operating under already written statutes. We're not inventing laws. We're not in making law. anything new. That is not uh, what a zoning board does. Uh, they're, uh, they're an administrative body. Um, so I, I, I don't uh, think that uh, a zoning board member, uh, I don't think it's appropriate for them to even uh, give a full answer on the, what they have, a, what vision they have. It's because they're not inventing laws. They're not writing these uh, laws. They're totally operating within them. They're but that's not true. They may not be writing laws, but they're changing laws. They're changing the zoning laws. Laws that were put in place for a reason. They're not considering the people of those communities that they are affecting. They are changing laws. And in a sense, they are writing laws, right? Because once they change them and to you're able to go higher now, now that's the new law. Now you can go even higher. Now you can go 40, 50, 60 stories high because they've changed the law. So they're doing a lot of that. So, you know, I, 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 that's not true necessarily, Guy. Made prior. You're not working um, within the And so that's how I... Uh, approach this topic, honestly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council President. Thank you. Next, we have Councilwoman Pineda Isaac. Thank you, Madam Council President. Um, hello, Mr. Jalaj. Did I Good pronounce evening. your name, yes. name correctly? Yes. Um, it's great to meet you today, and I'm glad that you're here before us. Uh, so can you... Um, you said you held positions with the city and county. What positions were those? Mm, so I question. worked in the mayor's office a mm. few years ago uh, in the film office, uh, helping that, uh, th that department specifically. And then in the, uh, at the county level, <clears throat> I was uh, an assistant in the county board of legislators. Uh, mm. And at the federal level, I was uh, helping uh, Congressman Elliot Engel, who is the House Member of Foreign Affairs, uh, or the, the Chairman of the House Committee of Foreign Affairs. 
um, in District 16 of New York. Uh, that was for uh, a few months uh, while I could hold it while also being a student. Thank you. And um, to share with us, what is your understanding of the role um, and the importance of the Zoning Board of Appeals? Yeah, uh, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals has a function that is two-pronged, right? And on one hand, they are meant to interpret uh, the zoning ordinance. And uh, on the other hand, they're meant to uh, give variances, use variance and area variances, uh, insofar as the jurisdiction of the uh, zoning board is uh, appellate, they can only hear and decide on cases that are uh, appealed, meaning they're a, they're a challenge to a decision that has already been rendered by the zoning enforcement officer, who in this case would be uh, the commissioner of housing and buildings. Uh, so that's the only way uh, the zoning board can actually uh, even hear something, uh, with the notable exception of uh, special use permits. Uh, in those instances, the zoning board is afforded uh, original jurisdiction. Um, and that's, that's the function of the zoning board. It, it's important insofar as it is uh, the administrative body that allows citizens and uh, in investors, people who are on the ground living their daily lives in Yonkers to address grievances. They're concerned about where they sleep, where they socialize, where they work. Uh, so the decisions that the zoning board make, uh, the members of the zoning board make, uh, can affect people's lives in a real way. Um, and many of these decisions are things that last for decades. I agree with you there. Um, so he says that he's worked for the mayor's office. I believe his brother also did. He had like a $20,000 a year job there. He's worked for the film office. And he's uh, done stuff at the county assistant as a, at the BOL, Board of Legislators. But that would worry me, right? You, you worked in the mayor's office, so I'm sure you have a strong um, you know, relationship with the mayor. Your father has donated to the mayor. You worked in the film office. So you're all for the developments of these movie studios, right? So you're all for Lionsgate and Joe Cotter and Greenpoint Studio guys taking over all of Warburton Avenue and, uh, you know, in the whole West Side with their studios, right? So that would concern me, right? So I would imagine that he has a favoritism to those people, to those individuals, right? He's going to lean towards them and making decisions that benefit them, right? That would worry me. Uh, then he talks about a two-pronged function on the uh, board. They're there to interpret the laws and give variances, right? Well, they're there really to give variances. I don't know about interpreting the law because they haven't been following the law. They've been mostly changing the law through variances. He's also spoke about special use permits, and that's how uh, they can directly make a decision on something as opposed to going through the building and housing, which is Sam Borelli, which that's going to get through as well if it goes through him. But the zoning board has been doing a lot of special use permit stuff, right? A lot of the developers have been coming before them. Uh, requesting special use permits. Although very bright young man, there's a lived experience needed when it comes to making potential huge decisions that impact lives. It's easy to read about an issue. It's another to feel it. Absolutely. They already made up their mind, but I'm extremely proud of everyone who came out and continues uh, ahead like to a head light. Applying pressure and raising voter turnout is key. That's right. Voters, we got to come out. We have to make this the largest voter turnout in decades. Come out and vote. That's how you win. They don't hear you at the zoning board meetings. They don't hear you at the city council meetings. They will hear you at the polls. You have to come out and vote. It's very important. So let's move this up here. Experiences occur that are way above, you know, a, a standard. 15% is a, a fair standard. I think only maybe 10%. Uh, but needless to say, I just was curious to see if you have something in your mind, because this is a lot of what you're going to do now is making a difference on it, among other things and looking at the whole case numerical calculations and i was just curious as to what your opinion was and that helps you out to think that if 15% is the number that that, that that's going to be good for others but uh, uh, i'm i'm happy to share your um, answer. as i'm not the judge that passed that opinion uh, i am not necessarily uh, endorsing that number as the threshold um, however what i can say to you is that every case that would come before the zoning board 
would be unique and would have its own set of facts and would have its own context. And I generally, as a principal, do not like to make uh, absolute claims uh, for the future when I have no context as to how it will be applied. Um, so for that reason, I would not give a concrete number now. Um, perhaps the zoning board comes to one in the future, um, but I think it would be imprudent to do so right now. Okay. Uh, and I believe they're talking about the affordable housing uh, ordinance, uh, you know, 10%, Marantia is saying 15%, but he basically doesn't want to corner himself, right? He doesn't want to back himself up into a wall by say, stating a number or anything. So he's going to, you know, do what a good lawyer would do. Anyone who's good with words, you know, they're going to dance around it, talk around it. That's what he's been doing this entire time. He hasn't given anything specific that would allow me as a council member to make a solid decision on this guy. So if I couldn't do that, I would vote no. Thank you very much, Christian. I appreciate your... Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm an old person. I'm a seasoned citizen here. Sometimes our boards have quorum problems because they can't get a quorum on the zoning board because maybe there's too many of us seasoned, seasoned citizens up there. So we need some youth. We need you. And by the way, you're only one of seven members. You can't do much on the zoning board to sway things. You're one of seven. So maybe you sit back and you listen and you learn and you see how things are going. So basically, Mike Breen is saying we need some youth. We don't need experience. We need youth. The same reasoning or dumb reasoning he's been given for uh, Sam Borelli appointment, right, to the building department, right? When he introduced the legislation to reduce the requirements that would be needed to become the commissioner of the building department. He said, we don't need an engineer. We need someone who can manage. That's the same thing they said about Vincent Pichy, the guy who was there before him. He was replacing the guy prior to that because they needed someone to manage. But Vincent Pichy was an actual engineer. Sam Borelli is just there. He's just Sam Borelli, a political guy who's been friends with politicians for a very long time, who ran for mayor at one point unsuccessfully, who was the deputy commissioner of the, the uh, DPW until they needed someone who's going to just stamp and approve everything that they want over at the building department. And that's why they put Sam in there, right? And so now Mike Breen, here's again what is you know, low IQ. I got to say, it might bring, you don't say very smart things. Here you go. We need some youth. We need some youth on there. Right. And you're only one person. How are you going to make such an impact? You know, maybe you could just sit back and learn. That's what he's basically saying. You can sit there and learn. We don't need someone to sit back and learn. We need someone that is experienced and knowledgeable and that's going to make the decisions that are best for the communities. It's happening now, Mike Breen. We don't have time for this guy to sit and learn. Why don't you bring back Jeff Landsman? Why did you guys get rid of him? Jeff Lambson was very experienced. He had been on the board for 30 years. Why don't you bring him back? That would probably be the best appointment. And you'll become a good board member. Do you know who Joe Chinchulli is? Do you know who Joe Chinchulli is? Yes. 53 years on the zoning board. I hope they started as a young man. Maybe, you know, maybe you could do 54 years. You know, I'm not saying it. But I'm happy you're here. I'm happy we have some youth. We wouldn't have won World War II if it wasn't for our youth. So we need youth. And I We're not fighting a war, Mike Breen. Use your brain. If you had, your hot dog stand would still be around. And your wife wouldn't have to fight people to keep your political career going. Vote Ron Chute. Write his name in for District 5. Listen to this guy, District 5. This is the guy that represents you. The Hamburglar. I appreciate you being here, and I'll be supporting you. I thank you. Thank you. And was totally unprepared for, for these volunteer positions, right? But all that being said, I still have some questions. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I have some questions. So first question is, you heard some, some folks mention that a lot of the development, all of the development is in my district, the first council district, um, and they're concerned about the overdevelopment, they're concerned about a lot of different issues. What are your thoughts on that? Specific, like, are you, you said you grew up in, you were born and raised in Yonkers, you love yes. Yonkers, um, you have experience. I remember you, I, we've met many times. I know you, I know your father. Um, oh, of course you do. And I know you. I know your father. Janae, not the brightest bulb. 
I or that marijuana want to know what you know about West Yonkers. What do you think about this side of the city of Yonkers, being that you're from the east side? How do you feel about it? How do I feel about it? He's from the northeast side, damn near Scarsdale. It's pretty much Scarsdale where he lives. He's like over there uh, by the Red Lobster on Central Avenue, tucked in over there on the same street as Zahi Jerris and Frank Jerris, the campaign managers of Shanae Williams. He lives next to Shanae Williams' campaign manager. He lives next to Tasha Diaz's campaign manager. He lives next to James Nolan's campaign manager and Lakeisha Connors Bellamy's campaign manager. Who you think is getting this guy on here? About it in regards to the development that is occurring there? Yes, in regards to development. <laughs> he has no, no clue. Long and hard. I think when dealing with any community that is historically underrepresented, whether it's politically or economically, it is important to approach every development with a level of precision and open-mindedness and empathy that cannot be denied as being sincere. <laughs> like this guy. I hope that all of the development that is happening in your district has been something that you sincerely look at and that you sincerely screen and i trust that it is and insofar as you have done your due diligence on them these developers uh and i heard you earlier tonight and you grilled them with questions and you gave kudos where it was due and um, i think this is uh an example of this guy uh, leadership that uh cares for their constituents i don't have any particular gripe with any particular project to share because i don't have every detail that has come before the zoning board on these issues i said this before i think it would be imprudent to uh, give an answer on it would be imprudent to give an answer of a future event without having proper context, proper information, blah, blah, blah. The guy is full of shit. He is full of shit. He didn't even answer the question. If you can't give an opinion, at least, then you shouldn't be even considered. I would think that you would have something to say about it. You would know what's going on somewhat. You would be involved. We do, right? A lot of us here, I, I do. I've been paying attention. A lot of you guys watching and um, girls have been paying, and women have been paying attention, right, to what's happening in terms of the development. We know whether they're good or not. We see the changes. We see the impacts. So maybe we should be appointed, right? This guy doesn't seem to have any clue or he's pretending not to have a clue and therefore has no real opinion. He's not uh, you know, concerned with the people on that side. He's not an empathetic person. He's not a sincere person. He's full of shit. And if you can't see that, then you know, you've probably gotten scammed a few times in your life. That's what he's all about. He talks about uh, you know, a, a, a community. When it comes to a community that's been historically underrepresented, whether it's politically or economically, well, you got that right, it has. It has been underrepresented politically and economically. And you're speaking to the person who's underrepresented them politically. Any situation on which I have little context, um, I think the zoning board has insights uh, that is probably greater than the average citizen. I'm not on the zoning oh, wow. board right now. I do not have the same resources. Hector Santiago does not have greater information and knowledge than me. I can put that, let's, I can put that for a bet. Let's move on. Uh, let's just, oh, oh, Tasha Diaz. I got already um, asked those questions. Um, I want to circle back to um, people not doing their due diligence, right? I want to speak on this. I heard a lot of people try to attack him because of his age. Oh. Me, I find that to be discriminatory. I don't think that that's fair. 
Me sitting here listening to him, he is well beyond his years. No one can take that away from him. I did my due diligence and looking into his background. He is a graduate of Georgetown with a degree okay. in global business. Right. He did coursework in urban planning. He is currently a leading, a lending analyst. He worked in DC and Virginia in real estate and development. For 23 years old, I think he has a magnificent background. Him just speaking here, his poise, his intelligence, it came out. I really do think that we do need younger people on the zoning and planning boards. Why? Because I think that he will take the necessary steps to ensure that when projects come before the zoning or planning board, he will do his due diligence. He will look further into he it should. as a person you that really doesn't want to be there. Saying. He's 23 years old. He can be anywhere. If they look at his background, he can do anything. And at 23 years old, I want to commend you. The way you stand here and you talk and, and you Better sat back you. there like a gentleman while everybody attacked you about your age. That's discriminatory. We want to stop that. We want to bring peace to Yonkers. You know, when people come up and they say things like that about people, it hurts them. You and I know it hurts you. I mean, you're probably not going to admit it here, but it hurts. Wait, what about calling people beggars? Right? What about calling people who are in need beggars? People who come to you for help. My, you see how she's I love white people. I love all people. And, and this is nothing. About, but I just want to make the point. Do you see how she talks to a white man? When have you ever heard her speak to uh, about a black man or a black woman or a minority woman or man like that? Right? When has she ever spoken to him? Like, such an ass kisser. He is smart. He's educated. That's great. No one's saying he's not. No one's saying that he's a stupid man, that he's not going to be successful, or that he hasn't been successful. What we're saying is, is he the right fit for the zoning board here in the city of Yonkers? Is he someone that should be on the zoning board while we're going through so much transitions, through so much development here in the city of Yonkers? Should we just completely revamp our zoning board? Because, I mean, many of us are not happy with any of them. They are obviously working on behalf of the developers. He is the son of a developer. He's rich and he's privileged, Tasha. So while you sit there and, you know, tout on his accomplishments, while you give him his kudos, there are many people in the city of Yonkers that are being pushed out, kids that are not getting a good education, that will never be able to probably do the things he's done because our school district sucks. Because they have representatives like you who only care about the developers. Why don't we help people in our community achieve his success, Tasha? Let's work on that. And we don't do that by pushing them out. We don't do that by raising their rents. We don't do that by destroying neighborhoods and communities. And we don't do that by ignoring our educational system. We do that by being true representatives of our city, our constituents, our district, and fighting hard for them, not your developer friends. Tasha, Jesus. Don't sound such a like because an it hurt me to hear people say that about you. I'm a mother of a 22 year old and a 25 year old. You know, people said a lot of things about my daughter. My daughter, a, 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 she has a bachelor's degree in communications and a minor in sociology. And for where I come from, a lot of people don't have that. So they clowned her as if they clown me. But look where I am today and where I will be for the next four years in this Ooh. seat representing where she will be for the next four years. Did you hear that, Hector? She is that confident because her campaign manager is a known cheater. He's a known election fraudster. He pled guilty to election fraud. Her campaign team, election fraudsters, the same campaign team that Shanae Williams has. And that's why she's also confident that she's going to win. Because uh, if anything else, they will cheat the elections. That's what they're going to do. They are planning on cheating the elections. They know that these are tough elections. That's why they're out there in full force. They are tough. People want them out, but they're still confident because they believe that their campaign team, who's known for cheating, who has admitted and pled guilty to cheating elections, will once again cheat the elections on her behalf. And they're so confident and arrogant, and they don't give a F about you. And it should be very obvious by the way they're talking here. 
my city wholeheartedly. You being appointed by the mayor is no different than a human rights board where people come to be appointed. When those people come to be appointed, they are appointed by someone they know. Same difference here. And I think that we should. And I'm in hopes that my colleagues will support him. Wow. Because to slight him is not fair. You know, people, when they look into people's backgrounds, yes. they, they don't look as far as they should. You heard all of the bad about him, the bad about his family. But what people don't know, they do give back. And not just to fundraisers, to charity. You know, when, when they were looking for... None of that matters, Tasha. None of that matters. It's like when you want people to vote for you because you stand at the food distributions that are being done by other organizations and you just get there to steal the good food first and then stay for the rest of the time to do selfies and videos, that doesn't do anything to help make you a better representative. That doesn't help you do your job better. So just because his family has donated to uh, charities doesn't mean that he's going to be the best choice, that he is the right candidate. Just because, just because, Tasha, Right. He is young doesn't mean that we're discriminating against him because we're saying that it's because of his experience. We want experienced people on the board, Tasha. That's who we want. Right. And it does matter that his father has contributed to you guys, to your campaign, to the mayor's campaign, because that tells us that you are supporting him to get more support. How much would they uh, guarantee you if you guys a lot or got him on how much are you going to make that's what it's all about and that is important to know because if you are doing that because he donates his father donates and that's a problem and we don't want to even have that you know that uh, suspicion right so let's avoid it all together and let's not appoint people that donate to their comp to their com uh, campaigns that's it find people in the community educated people from our community. Tasha, is there no one that educated in District 3? I mean, if you are what represents District 3, I don't want to generalize, though, but you are a poor representation. Poor representation. You know, based on you, we would suggest that most people in District 3 are not educated, but that's not true. So you're a poor representation, right? And so now you want to bring this guy who has no commitment, no investment, no care, really, about the communities that he's going to impact. And you think that that's the best choice. What do the people in your district think, Tasha? Or do you not care? Do you not care? It's just about what you think, right? Restore to open up in Yonkers, right? His father opened up his okay. doors for that non-for-profit. So people in the community that can't afford furniture can get it at a low discounted price. He gave it to them at a price where he could have leased it to someone else for double the amount that he gave it to them. So when, when they say that they give back, they do. These are things that people should look into. People just scratch at the surface of things. Absolutely. And they don't go deeper. And that's why... People are misled. You heard people say, what the hell are you talking about, Tasha? You need to go deeper, deeper, deep, deep, deep and stay there. The council members who received donations from his daddy should have recused themselves. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. And look how they are. Look at Tasha. Hear her. Right. Why? Because she's getting money. She's getting money. She's going deeper. One person said go deeper, project girl. should go to the planning board. One person said it said it should go to the city council. Make up your mind. We as a city council, we refer everything to the planning and the zoning boards because we don't want to have that conflict of interest. But when we do that, we're still penalized. I want to end this by saying, Mr. Jalaj, thank you. Thank you for wanting to service your city. You were born and raised here, and I just want to commend. Did you come thank my wife for volunteering her time uh, every Saturday and after school to work with Minority girls, black and brown girls, Tasha. You didn't give two craps. Did you thank me for being out there in the community, my wife and I, going in our own pockets to pay to feed homeless people? Did you thank us for that? You haven't thanked anybody from the community. You haven't thanked anybody of color that's doing things, that's taking the initiative, that's doing it because they want to help. Genuine, sincere people. Why don't you come to Freddie Vasquez and say, hey, you got a bachelor's, right? You got an MBA, actually. 
you're more than qualified then because you got a college degree and you're from the community and you're involved. But I'm not the only one. There are many people with degrees in our community that would like to be involved or that are involved. You guys don't approach them. You guys don't ask them. You don't involve the community because they don't want you to know what's going on. They get people that have no interest, no investment in our communities that live outside of Yonkers at times or live so far east that you think they live in Bronxville, Scarsdale. They have money that are only coming to the west side to make more money at your expense. That's who they care about. Thank you for coming here tonight and being the man that you are. Thank, Thank you. you. The man that you are. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go of what you think we all would like to hear. What's our feedback? Or comments. That was the interview portion. Yeah. So I didn't make my. I was asking the gentleman questions. I didn't want to portray my position at that point. Is there feedback? Too close. Um, so I will not be voting for this appointment. And Mr. Jalaj, I want you to know that is nothing personal against you. Um, I actually do think your resume is impressive. And as someone who um, ran for office at a very young age, I think that your age is actually something that I would um, but I would hope to see more in, uh, in our different boards. I think we do need diversity within ages, within backgrounds, within race, and we do need to diversify these, these specific boards. My vote um, no for this appointment is more of a hope to change the system in which we approve these appointments. Mm. You know, and it might be an idealistic... And perhaps it's an idealistic notion, but it is my hope that we create or we have a more organic and inclusive process in who we choose. And it doesn't always feel like a familial connection. Right. So I'm glad that as of late, it feels that more people are paying attention to things that are happening in the city. And that, it's that, right. whether it comes to the development that are happening in our communities, I find that more people are getting involved, right. um, specifically to appointments now. I just feel like people are paying attention more to the agenda. And that is a good thing because it right. puts more pressure on us to... To, to be more intentional, to be, you know, to listen more, to, to hear the concerns that are coming from the residents, and I'm happy with that. And again, you know, my issue is not with, um, with your age, and, and, and um, it is more with, you know, the feeling that it, it is more about a familial connection, right? Um, it is it's very weird, right, that the person that you're replacing shares your last name and, and is your brother. Um, it also, I think, doesn't make people uncomfortable to know that, you know, your family, um, not only your donors, because there are people that donate and all that. There are people that donate that are in the audience um, to other campaigns. It is that, you know, they're, they're a very large donor. And I think that that makes people very uncomfortable because um, we know that money moves politics and government. Right. So it just creates this uncomfortable space for people and a board that is affecting the lives of many of the people here. So there are people here that are not on these boards, but they are paying attention to what's on the agenda. So one of the things that for me did it is that um you know you couldn't speak to not one project even exactly. though you did have exactly. a family member that was on the agenda so i thought perhaps it could be dinner talk conversation um but again um i do think that we should allow opportunities for young people to get on these boards and provide opportunities for people to um, to get knowledge about how the zoning board of appeals works, it just has to be done in a more organic way to make people feel that the process um, is open and it's inviting and really is going to have in mind the Yonkers residents and the communities that these boards are going to make changes on. And that's why I will be voting against this item today. Thank you, Madam Council President. Thank you. She made a great point. She made a great point. I mean, it's really, it's nothing personal. It's nothing personal, but it just looks bad, right? It just looks bad that you're replacing you're replacing your brother. 
Your father is a campaign contributor, a big donor, not a you know hundred dollar guy. He's a five, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar guy, right? And he does it often. He also has real estate interest in the city, so he has a special, a, a, you know, personal financial interest in what happens there. And it sets a bad tone. It sends a bad message. And that is why we should not have this guy appointed. That is why they should have all voted no. It's not about the age. It's not about how smart he is. It's not about what he knows or doesn't know. But the main point here, the biggest issue here is who he is, who, what, his last, oh, what his last name is, who he's replacing, who his dad is. And it makes the whole system look corrupt. It makes the whole process look corrupt. And that's the point, Tasha. That's the point that you need to go down deep and figure out. Got it, Tasha Diaz? People must vote. It's the only time these officials will listen. Vote to restore term limits. We have to come out and vote. That's a fact. Uh, it's very important that we do. But a shout out to Gordon Song. Mr. Gordon July, you could that. have a seat. Uh, and I also, uh, it's true. Another thing is that he couldn't speak to any specific project. That's exactly what I said. You know, he gave these vague, broad responses to the questions. Nothing specific, nothing that would really make you say, you know what? This guy is a good fit for this position. Maybe we should put him on the board, regardless of who his dad is, regardless of what. He said a lot of things that make sense and that we would want to hear from a potential uh, zoning board member or someone we're going to vote on to be on the board. But he didn't. He didn't mention anything on the West side when he was asked about the, what he thought about the overdevelopment. I mean, you have to have some kind of an opinion about the amount of development that's happened. You don't have to know all the details or the information. You can just see it. And as Corazon said, your brother who lives with you has never had conversations with you about any projects. There's nothing that you can have said specifically. Everything was like, well, I have to be appointed first to, to make any decisions or to have an opinion on that. That's all he gave. Vague, broad answers. And that wasn't good enough. Um, everyone has made a comment. Thank you for your time and coming in. Um, next, we have remarks from Councilwoman Williams. And in citizen, someone who, though he's not black, though he's not Hispanic, though he doesn't live in the first district, he's someone who will take his job seriously. And if he doesn't, we'll see that and we'll and we'll make it known do that do he came before us in this public um, public space and he lied, flat out lied to her face, saying that he will not be a rubber stamp when he is, right? We'll see that. Only time will tell. I'll tell you this. There were people who thought that I was going to be a rubber stamp you for are. the mayor. People who did not want me. You are. You're a rubber stamp. Me to get appointed and people who did not support me and some of those people still don't support me and that's okay. But guess what? I have always been myself. I vote sometimes with the administration. I vote against it. I always speak out. I am myself. How did you vote on that term limit thing? How was that? You were confused there. And I believe that I need to give this young man an opportunity to show us himself. And that's where I stand on that. So I will be voting for this tonight. Thank you. So she wants to give him an opportunity to screw up. That's what she's basically saying. Let's give him an opportunity to show us. That's because they want this guy no matter what. Again, Shanae Williams, campaign manager, lives a house or two away from this guy and his family and his father. They are friends. They know each other. Shanae, Tasha's campaign managers are friends with these people. They do business with these people. That is how they get them to donate to their campaigns in the first place. So they're approving a friend of their campaign manager. The reason why Tasha and Shanae are even involved in politics or have you know gotten anywhere in politics, because if they were doing it on their own, Tasha, Shanae, you guys would not be there. Point blank, mother effing, period. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilman Moranti. And uh, thank you for uh, putting your volunteer who wants to sit on one of the boards. Um, yeah, what about that? But as, as Councilman Breen said, it's political funny season. You know, I, I, I think you'll get approved tonight. Um, you're only two years younger than your brother. Tonight. And 
one of the council people who are voting no said that it's great, this, these are the quotes, it's great to have a young man interested in getting involved with the city and its doings. And then voted to approve your brother. Um, I, I was, I'm really discouraged He's gonna by the sense of ageism now. that I heard tonight. And I understand, you know, wanting someone to have more experience, and, and I think that's fair. Um, but as, as the, one of the councilwomen mentioned, she was 25 when elected uh, in a race to represent. Goes to show what kind of man he is. He's attacking Corazon now, right? He's not making this about the appointment. Now he's going to go in and say, oh, well, Corazon voted against it, but she voted to approve his brother. What has that got to do anything now, John? Again, John Rubel is also a candidate that is managed by the same people that managed Tasha and that managed Shanae. You have to understand how important it, that piece of information is. They are managed by the same individual. It's basically like one guy owning Pepsi and Coca-Cola. They're going to make the money anyway. There's no co real competition. There's no real independent thought. They all think the same. They're all going to have the same vote. They're all going to have the same opinion, just said in different ways. They're all going to be there prepared, ready to attack those who don't go along with it because they have been planning this for a while. Why do you think they moved the meeting uh, to this Tuesday? Move the appointment so they can prepare for this. They knew people were gonna come in there and oppose it. And so they had to be prepared because they wanted to make this appointment anyway. And the fact that so many people have come out to oppose it and they still move forward with it shows that these people are corrupt. They don't represent the people, they are corrupt. Bottom line, point blank, period. They are corrupt. And John Rubo is a man that lies, cheats, and steals. A man that was awarded over $300,000 in PPP money, yet had to be sued in order to pay his employees. Hispanic employees. Guess he figured, screw them. What are they going to do? They sued his ass, and he settled out of court. And now he's got the IRS on his ass because he was not paying taxes because he was using money inappropriately to benefit his business. And that's a no, no. And so he's one of the many people being investigated for PPP fraud. That's why he's remained low. He's remained quiet, but now he's set to attack Corazon Pineda. He's hoping to get out of council now and get a job with the city and remain low. Almost 40,000 people serve the city of Yonkers and I don't think you are too young. Um, I he also sits under uh, as the chair of the real estate committee and his landlord over at the Yonkers Brewing is one of the biggest developers in Yonkers, AMS. Why has John not been removed from the chair of the real estate committee? Why has not someone else uh, served on the chair now? Why doesn't he get replaced during the reorganization? I commend you for wanting to serve and for the amount of approval. Yes. Majority Leader Diaz. Yes. Uh, Councilmember Pineda Isaac. No. Councilmember Williams. Yes. Council President Collins Bellamy. Look at you. She don't want to do it. She doesn't I'm want abstaining. to. Oh, she abstained. Adopted 40. She abstained. Oh. No, she didn't. She abstained from the. What? What? Because you know they're screwing up the Northwest side. You know they're screwing up all of Warburton, Woodworth, where your peoples are from, where you grew up. You know what I'm saying? You know it. You know you made a mistake with that legislation that you introduced. People are saying you haven't buyed remorse. You know it because you're feeling it inside, but you can't do nothing about it now, right? I see it all over your face at this meeting. You can do the right thing. You can step up and speak out. God's watching. What would Jesus do? Huh? He wouldn't continue. He would stop it. He would speak up. This is political monopoly, obviously. This is crazy. They got it on lot. Again, the Zahi Jerris machine. Why does she abstain? Because she doesn't want to be a part of it. But she can't vote no. That's sad, man. It's sad. We don't have any real elected. Who's, who's representing us? Who's fighting for us? Who's advocating for the people? We have no one. 
No one. John is waiting for a six-figure job. That's right. If the mayor gets elected again, absolutely. Uh, what did Moranti say on the subject? He was opposed to it. He said some things, you know, um, uh, but, you know, he still was nice about it. Moranti, you had to be a little mean about it, right? Got to be tough. Check her campaign contributions. His daddy must have donated to her. She is a lawyer and has already compromised her license. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things there that, you know, but uh, it's unfortunate. The people have no representation, no one advocating for us. Madam uh, President, the, sorry. The second item in the agenda, on the agenda is the general ordinance. Them, I didn't even get it. If there are no further questions. Mayor Williams. Yes. Selling tobacco and related. Can you do that again? All right. Uh, Councilmember Pineda Isaac. No. Councilmember Williams. Yes. Council President Collins Bellamy. Watch this face. I'm not staying. Yeah. Adopted 42. Adopted. Thank you. Four to two. Adopted four to two. <laughs> Folks, I'm Freddy Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. What job is Rubo getting? Well, maybe he might be making license plates or maybe working the, you know, mess hall, serving the food to the other inmates. I don't know. But they deserve to be in handcuffs for what they've been doing while sitting on the city council. I'm so unfortunate. Folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics. I can't believe that they voted this guy in after all this, man. But you guys are making it so obvious. And for that, we appreciate it. Because that's a step in the right direction, right? It's like an addiction. You first must admit that there's a problem before you can solve the problem, right? So by them being so obvious of who they represent, more and more people are starting to see the problem. And that will lead to a solution. And we can, we can find a solution this November 7th on election day. Early voting is October 28th. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. I appreciate you watching and supporting. Thank you, Yonkers. I represent you. I support you. And I appreciate you supporting me. Thank you, folks. Together we get it done, right? United we stand, divided we fall. Shout out to the people that went out there to speak. And it's like, you know, Corazon said and others are saying, it's great to see more and more people coming out. More and more people are paying attention. Tasha, you know what that leads to? The slammer. Janai Wallace works for the Office of the Agent. That's right. She's been, that she, she's perfect height to kiss ass, isn't she? She was like perfectly made to kiss ass that woman. And that's what she will continue to do for her little titles and jobs. Ching. I'm Freddie Vasquez, Basement Politics. Peace out. I love you. Thank you for supporting. I will see you when I see you. Peace out. Watching Basement Politics with my dad, Freddy Vasquez. You're watching Basement Politics with my dad, Freddy Vasquez. I want to end this quick because I'm greedy and I want somebody to want a chicken. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching Basement Politics with my husband, Freddy Vasquez. No!